Are you confused about which stool test is the best for your gut health? In this video, we're gonna explore some key questions. Which stool test is the most accurate? What actually do you find out when you do a stool test? What do they tell you? What's the best value for money stool test? And what is the best stool test for you to do based on your digestive system or your gut condition or your symptoms that you're getting and your overall health? Some people are doing a stool test because they have skin conditions, an autoimmune problem, headaches, brain fog, and the gut health affects all of this. I've been working as a naturopath for the last 20 years. And for the last 10 years, I've been utilizing advanced stool testing to help me help clients understand what's going on with their gut health and improve their symptoms. And during this time, I've done thousands of stool tests using companies like Genova GI FX, Diagnostic Solutions GI Map Test, the Doctor's Data Testing, the GI 360, Viome Testing, and more recently, the Vibrant Wellness Gut Zoom Test. And they can tell you a lot of different things and some are better than others. So let's look into what are the best options. So the top tests available right now are things like the Diagnostic Solutions GI Map, the Genova GI Effects Test, the Doctor's Data GI 360, and the Vibrant Wellness Gut Zoomer Test. The ones that I use mostly with clients are the GI Map and the Gut Zoomer. I work with clients all over the world, and these tests, they can be shipped to virtually every country, with the exception of a few obvious ones like Russia and North Korea. So getting the test to you is easy and getting back to the lab. So how do these more advanced tests compare to tests that you might have done with your doctor? Sometimes I talk to people and they've got digestion issues and I suggest doing a stool test. And they're like, I've already done that. My doctor ran a test, everything was perfect. And when I look at these tests, they've usually only tested for a couple of parasites or they've done the old fashioned culture test to look for bacteria. The old type of stool testing couldn't identify many different bacteria. Let's have a look at this stool test. And you can see from this test that they've only tested for two parasites, Giardia and Cryptosporidium. There's many other parasites they could have tested for. And this also mentions culture, no bacteria pathogens isolated. But that's the old fashioned way of checking for bacteria. And you can't identify many key bacteria that way. So this same person, they did a GI map stool test through Diagnostic Solutions. So have a look at this test. And you can see from these results that they had an overgrowth of four different opportunistic bacteria. Plus there was a lot of other things going on with the rest of their tests, like low digestive enzymes, inflammation. And when you look at the Klebsiella marker here, it's not just a little bit high. When you understand what the, uh, the numbers mean here, it should be less than 5,000 cells per gram of stool. And one E5 means there were over 100,000 cells per gram. So they didn't have just a little bit extra, they had a lot of bacterial overgrowth. It's not often that one person will do two different stool tests. Every now and again though, some people do. So here's an example of the Genova GI effects test. And you can see here that there's no infections present, no parasite infection, no pathogenic bacteria. But this person also did the GI map test. And when you look at the GI map test results, they had a very high level of Entamoeba histolytica and also Giardia. So when you look at the Giardia, it should be less than 5E3, so less than 5,000 cells per gram, and they were 1.6, so over 10,000 cells per gram. But the Entamoeba histolytica is a quite a pathogenic parasite, and that was over 100,000 cells per gram of stool. So let's have a look at the GI map test in more detail and compare that to the gut zoomer test. And we'll look at which one is, could be the best option for you, and whether you even need to do a stool test. The GI map test is the cheaper of the two options. The GI map test with Zonulin costs around 470 US dollars if you're in the US. Prices vary depending on shipping costs around the world, but it's usually an extra 40 or 50 dollars if you're shipping. Compare that to the Gutsuma, and that is 600 dollars. That also includes Zonulin, but as you'll see, it includes a lot more markers for inflammation, digestive enzymes, absorption, and also the beneficial bacteria and pathogens. So this is the latest gut zoomer report if you've done the gut zoomer test before your reports may look a little bit different to this this is just an upgraded version so the first part of the test is just an overall summary so this is the gut zoomer test the shannon's index and simpson's index is just an indicator of bacterial diversity so in this case the person has low diversity and the phyla the gi map test measures the bacteroides and the firmicutes they don't measure these other ones and in this case the proteobacteria at 15 percent these are a lot of bacteria that produce LPS or lipopolysaccharides. And 15%, even though it's in green here, doesn't mean it's a good thing. It's just the color they use. 
it should be around 5%. So 15% is too high. There's going to be a lot of inflammation going on with the bacteria present. And then I don't really worry too much about this part of the test. It just gives you like based on the bacteria, whether there's going to be like SIBO present, intestinal permeability, but some of these markers like cardiovascular health and neurological health, there's so many things that influence neurological health or cardiovascular health, for example, and not just bacteria. So I wouldn't, you know, if someone's high on this test, I wouldn't take that good or a bad thing. Same with the supplements. These are just AI or computer generated suggestions. You really want to work with a practitioner and work out the best treatment plan for you. So the start of the test, they always put everything that's out of range and then they go into the test in more detail. So as I said, there's high levels of lipopolysaccharide or endotoxins from bacteria present, and there's also high levels of inflammation. This can also be seen if there's parasites present or overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria. There's low levels of pancreatic enzymes, so they're gonna have problems digesting food, and that can cause bloating, gas, loose stools, those types of symptoms, or fat absorption. The short chain fatty acids are very low, and in particular, butyrate, which is important to combat inflammation, is very low. So they're most likely low in the butyrate producing bacteria. There's leaky gut present with the elevated zonulin. And with low secretory IgA, that's often indicative of a chronic stress or a chronic pathogenic infection that's been there for a while rather than an acute infection. And here we go, we've got a parasite present, Entamoeba histolytica, at a fairly high level. So that's probably why the inflammation markers are so high. So we really want to treat this as a priority. Now it goes into the inflammation markers in more detail. So inflammation can be caused by things like inflammatory bowel disease, but with calprotectin low, we can rule this out. And most likely this is going to be caused by the parasite and the bacteria uh, causing these high levels of inflammation present. So low pancreatic enzymes, like taking enzymes in the short term can be helpful. You really want to get to that underlying cause of why it's elevated. And things like SIBO could be a factor there as well. So it's important to take a full case history and not just treat someone based on their test results. Looking at the bile acid metabolites and everything here is okay. And as discussed before, the short chain fatty acids are very low. This is also a priority in treatment because with very low levels of short chain fatty acids, it's hard to fight infections. Other intestinal health markers include beta glucuronidase, where there's any blood present, whether there's an immune response to gluten, leaky gut, the pH. While this is in the green here, preferably you want a lower pH in the large intestine. Everyone talks about acid alkaline, and while it's true the blood should be alkaline, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine should be acidic. So here's all the good and bad bacteria that are detected on the Gatsuma test. So things like the Akamanzi is one of the keystone species that's really important and this is low. Then you've got other ones that are elevated that should be much lower. So I won't go into each individual bacteria in detail, but I'll just quickly scroll through and you can see how detailed this test is. The different types of opportunistic bacteria like Clostridium that is checked, the Salvibrio, Methanobacteria, Enterococcus. These are all bacteria that you want to have much lower levels of. And then you've got things like eubacterium, a key butyrate producing bacteria that you want to have much higher. So the test is very detailed. And you look at different species of ruminococcus, another key species, staphylococcus, something that you want to have much lower, streptococcus. The overall bifidobacterium levels are quite good, but then you may be low in particular species of bifidobacterium. That can help to target uh, certain probiotic supplementation. And the same with lactobacillus acidophilus. Overall, the levels are good, and this is what the GI map will measure, just the overall levels of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, but not which species may be low. And then you've got all the different pathogenic bacteria, parasites, worms, viral infections, and fungal and candida infections. And plus, it looks at different antibiotic genes to see if you're resistant to certain antibiotics. Here's a sample report of the GI map test. On page one, you've got the different bacterial pathogens, parasitic pathogens, and viral pathogens. It doesn't measure as many pathogens as the gut zoomer test, but it measures some of the most common ones that people would get, like Giardia, Salmonella, E. coli. On the second page, it looks at things like Helicobacter pylori, and this is one of the advantages of the GI map test over other tests. 
It got zoomable measure Helicobacter pylori, but it won't measure the virulence factors. And if you've got these positive virulence factors, you want to be more proactive in treating H. pylori. These virulence factors can increase the risk of stomach ulcers, but also gastric cancer. So even if someone's below the reference range here and they're positive for these virulence factors, I would be treating this person. These are the keystone bacteria. And as you can see from the Gutsuma, they looked at a vast amount of the beneficial bacteria, including all the different types of bifidobacterium and lactobacillus. So it just gives a bit of an overall idea of the keystone bacteria rather than a detailed analysis compared to the Gutsuma. And same with the phyla, it looks at bacteroides and firmicutes, the two most important ones, but it misses out on those proteobacteria, which are the more pro-inflammation causing types of bacteria. The GI map test measures the opportunistic bacteria. Everything on here, the Gatsuma will test as well, with the exception of Morganella. Morganella is a, one of the most common histamine producing bacteria. So a lot of people with allergies, histamine issues, mast cell activation syndrome can potentially have high levels of Morganella. They both measure the same fungi and yeast. The Gatsuma will measure a few more viral infections, but it's not common to see these viral infections positive. A lot of people have had cytomegalovirus and Epstein-Barr virus in the past, but these tests only measure if you have an active infection. They also measure some parasites and worms. Once again, not in the same detail as the Gatsuma. So with the GI map test, intestinal health markers, they measure some of the same ones as the Gatsuma. With the intestinal health markers on the GI map test, everything here is also measured by the Gatsuma. But the Gatsuma will also go into a lot more detail with inflammation markers, pH of the stool, bile acids, and the short chain fatty acids, which I think is really important and gives you a lot more information about how to treat and how to heal your gut health. The Gutzuma test will measure the antibiotic resistant genes in general, plus the H. pylori ones. With this test, they just measure the Helicobacter pylori antibiotic resistant genes. What this means, it doesn't mean these antibiotics would be bad for you, but it just means they'd be ineffective at treating Helicobacter pylori. I always recommend a natural treatment option if possible though. So that gives you an understanding of what the GI map test looks like and what the gut zoomer test looks like. So who should do a stool test? Well, if you're experiencing symptoms like constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, reflux, skin conditions, autoimmune conditions, brain fog, headaches, a whole range of different chronic health issues can be tied back to the gut. Who shouldn't do the test? Well, if you eat a crappy diet, you haven't changed anything in your diet, maybe that's the first place to start because just by doing that, it might help your gut health and your overall health. Especially people that come to me, they've already tried improving their diet. They've tried cutting out things. They're a bit confused of what to do. Sometimes people are eating the perfect diet and they've still got lots of gut issues. So you're the sort of person that should do the GI map test or the gut zoomer. I think the GI map is the best value for money. It's a simple test, gives you the key parasites and pathogenic bacteria that are detected, gives you some of the key species of beneficial bacteria. It's probably the best option for checking for Helicobacter pylori and the virulence factors. It also measures some of the intestinal health markers. The gut zoomer, it's a bit more expensive, but it's my favorite test to do. It goes into a lot more detail about the pathogens, bacteria, beneficial bacteria, intestinal health markers, inflammation markers, and it just adds a lot more to the picture when you're trying to help diagnose someone's gut issues. Also Vibrant Wellness, they have some bundle pricing as well. The GI map test is $600. You can get any three of their at-home tests for $800. So if you combine the gut zoomer with something like the wheat zoomer or the dairy zoomer, you can get that for $800. You could do the gut zoomer with the neural zoomer and wheat zoomer. That would be around $1,200 of testing and you can get that for $800. So that's my favorite option right now. So if you wanna find out more about the gut zoomer, have a look at this video and that'll go into more detail, going through a client's results and some of the treatment options that you might want to do. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment below and we can answer them for you.